The Nintendo 64, not everybody loves it. In fact, some folks find hating on it to be more lovable than actually loving it. Well, what if I told you that you can have your N64 and hate it too? That's right, you can hate the N64 overall while still enjoying some of the games, and it's my job to guess what those games might be by recommending them to you. And don't worry, I understand you've got a reputation to uphold, so it'll be our little secret. The games I'll be suggesting are all games that I feel will stand the test of time, something that this particular console, being one of the earliest to emphasize 3D games, tends to come under scrutiny for quite often. Let's just say certain games are a little more insecure about their age than others. I've caught Goldeneye doing some light reading. I find the N64 can be a tricky console to talk about because of a lot of the sentimental feelings people have looking back on it as well. One of my wife's friends literally took out her camera to take a picture of a Nintendo 64 controller when checking out my game room, to which I said, whoa, whoa, if you're taking pictures, the good stuff is right here, snap away. Okay, so these earlier 3D games, how do you sell somebody on these? Well, for starters, how about by not, with my first game not being a 3D game, or at least not entirely 3D. The game is Mischief Makers, made by the developer Treasure, known for making many games that are not 3D, but more important than that, games that are not bad. In fact, quite good. Mischief Makers is a game for the Nintendo 64 that I remember, renting back in the day and had no idea how to play it well as a kid. I just wanted to keep giving it a chance because of how frisky the title of the game is. Sadly, the same didn't work out for Rascal Racers, but it's been a real treat to come back to Mischief Makers as an adult. It plays on a 2D plane and has a lot of sprite work, so I think it will satiate most fans of 2D games in that regard. Also, this game is one of the exceptions where you can use the N64 64's D-pad as your primary way of controlling your character. So for the people who hate cramming their hands onto the middle and right handles, this one's for you. Slide that left hand on over to the left handle and let those hands breathe. In typical treasure fashion, the game is rather unconventional. The controls and your character's abilities feel unique from any other game I've ever played, with the most unique mechanic being that you can shake stuff. Why are there not more games where you can shake stuff? Learning how to navigate your character through the game may take a bit of getting used to, but it's really not so bad, and once you do, I feel the game's structure is actually pretty straightforward in a lot of ways and easy to get into. Basically, just a lot of you using your abilities to navigate the obstacles and puzzle elements in each stage until you reach the end. I really can't recommend this one enough for fans of 2D platformers, and more specifically puzzle platformers, looking for a unique take on the genre. Next game is NBA Hang Time. Now, right away, some people's first reactions might be, what is this, some kind of NBA Jam ripoff? And I would know because that's what I thought years ago. But no, it's actually the sequel to NBA Jam. It just couldn't be called NBA Jam because the rights to the name were acquired by a claim. But the original development team behind NBA Jam was behind this game, and that's what matters, because the result is a solid game. Because NBA Jam is one of those games that sure feels like just about everybody likes it, to the point it would almost seem weird if somebody said they didn't like it, like laughing. Yeah, I laugh sometimes, but I gotta tell you, not a fan. But for fans of NBA Jam and laughing, NBA Hang Time feels like a really solid suggestion. It's comical and fun. I actually like it even more than NBA Jam myself. The timing for releasing the ball when shooting feels better. I find the game's animation to be more impressive, and overall the game just feels like a souped up version of NBA Jam, which would make sense because that's what they were trying to make. The only thing not as good is that the iconic announcer from NBA Jam is gone, which how could you ever top that? The game does have a nice soundtrack though, including this little masterpiece you can hear when going into the game's settings menu.
Now everybody sing it with me. Hoo ow. Hoo ow. Now, I should point out that this game isn't exclusive to N64. It was on PS1 as well, but the N64 version is far more common to find, has less loading, and for gosh sakes, you should give something other than Mario Kart 64 a chance. Oh, and this is also yet another game you can use the D-pad with if you want to, which I would suggest you should want to. Next game up is Star Fox 64. Uh, Oh, we've gone into the 3D territory. This is where some people watch and start heading for the hills. But wait just a second, it's not so bad, I promise. The thing about Star Fox is that because it's essentially an on-rails shooter, the game is preset in terms of what's going to be coming up on screen next, and I feel this allowed the developers to improve how everything looks. Maybe it won't blow you away, but it at least looks okay, I think, and let's be honest, that's probably not why people are playing N64 these days anyways. That said, what is perhaps hard to look at in this game is Slippy's mumbling little motor mouth. Not to mention how it sounds, but this is where I would argue the fun comes in. You can blast them. In fact, you can blast all your cohorts. A little friendly fire never hurt anyone. Oh wait, now you're gone for the mission. And good riddance. The thing is, they are sassy and it can get annoying. Shooting the intended enemies can be fun as well, but I feel like Nintendo knew what they were doing. Players' emotions are gonna be all over the place. Let's just let them shoot everything. But as much as the character and personality of the game is very noteworthy and attention grabbing, the game itself is a really good one and because there aren't many rail shooters out there, at least compared to other genres, it's one of those genres where fans tend to like every game in the genre. Kind of reminds me of my bread bag clip collecting. My life is easier because I like the white ones. I like how there's different levels and paths through the game you can reach based on different little dipsy doos and trickety doodahs that you can do in the stages. Figuring these out for yourself or just looking them up can be a lot of fun. Next game on my list is Ogre Battle 64. Definitely not the type of game one would necessarily think of as a stereotypical N64 game. It's a strategy RPG game and boy let me tell you I am a sucker for these types of games. A lot of people who have played N64 at one point or another don't necessarily know about this one, but of the people that do, they are really big on this game. It's fairly easy to get into, utilizing a pretty straightforward formula of move your units to take over various enemy bases and battle enemy units until you can eventually take over their main base. Although each of the missions can certainly vary from one to the next. This game has always reminded me a lot of Dragon Force in many ways, but still different. By the way, Dragon Force is another game not everybody knows about. I actually thought the story was interesting in this one too, which normally isn't a deal breaker for these types of games since the gameplay is what really drives them. I've always been a fan of games that do the whole swords and sorcery theme though, and sometimes I just like to let my hair down and feel like a dork, you know? in all the right ways. And these games do it for me. Ogre Battle makes me think of those old tabletop strategy games, except without the elements that I always found the most annoying, like spending two hours explaining all the rules before you can even start. While the strategy RPG genre has certainly been added to in different ways over the years, I'd argue a lot of the ones that came out in the 90s were darn near perfect, and for that reason, they'll be good to go back to. Alrighty, and the last game I'd like to mention is Paper Mario. Something I hear a lot is that people wish the Paper Mario series would go back to its roots. So, just a suggestion, go back to Paper Mario's roots by playing the first game in the series. While the Thousand Year Door gets a lot of attention, deservedly so, I think this game is still pretty darn good itself. 
Plus, the N64 gets a lot of criticism for not having many RPGs, some would even tell you it has no RPGs. But here we have two that I've suggested in this video, and it's not like I've gone rogue, these games are well regarded. For those who aren't familiar with the Paper Mario games, besides being a love letter to fans of both Mario and Paper, which is actually a pretty large demographic, what you essentially have is a Mario RPG game where you also have different Mario type abilities outside of battles, typically inspired by, you guessed it, paper, that you use to navigate the overworld, and doing so is fun. At the beginning, you start with just a few basic abilities. I don't want to spoil too much, but just a quick little peek at later in the game, and yeah, you can do some pretty cool attacks, and the game always has you utilize the controller in an interactive way to increase the effectiveness of your attacks keeps things interesting, and keeps you more engaged as a player. Really great game in my opinion that I think people looking for something outside of the usual Mario type games will enjoy. Oftentimes people who aren't even fans of RPGs like this game too. And that does it for my five games that I wanted to suggest for this video. As you might have noticed, I left off some of the big hitters for the console, not because I personally don't think they'll always be fun, but just because everyone already knows about them, even the haters and maybe even especially the haters. And like I said before, I was trying to focus on games that I think skeptics of the console might enjoy. But if none of these games resonate, well, at least they can get back to the things they enjoy in life. In any case, let me know how I did. If you've already played some of these games, do you think they're good choices? And if you haven't played some of them, did any of them pique your interest? As always, let me know in the comments down below, and I will see ya in the next video. He's the Red Cooper, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the